Hello and welcome to the week that was in manufacturing where members of TM's editorial team sit down to discuss some of the biggest and best stories coming out of UK manufacturing this week. I'm Johnny Williamson, web editor, and joining me this week is TM's editor Callum Bentley. Welcome Callum. Johnny. So let's begin with claims that the government's flagship FitNote scheme isn't in the healthiest shape. Um, what can you tell us? Yeah, that's right, Johnny. So the government's FitNote scheme was released with the aim of getting people back to work quicker uh, following illness. Um, however, this week EEF has released its latest results from a survey which it's conducted which shows the scheme has uh, actually failed to deliver and this is five years on from its original implementation. So EEF has openly stated that the initiative's apparent flop uh, could seriously hamper the UK's attempt to improve sickness absence performance and reduce unnecessary sickness absence in the first place as well. So apparently around, or only around 5,000 GPs in the, U, in the total of uh, 40,500 UK GPs have been trained in health and work. Um, and only a small sum has been spent on, on GP training compared to the 170 million that the government's actually invested uh, into the new fit work uh, service over the five years as well. So what recommendations have the EF made to kind of get the scheme back on track? Yeah, well, EEF's tactic, I guess, is to urge government to set a fixed date by which all GPs uh, and medical professionals will be trained uh, in the use of the fit note, um, what the repercussions are if these GPs don't actually hit this deadline, that hasn't actually been stated, and it's probably not really EEF's position to be able to kind of uh, make any recommend recommendations along those lines as well. Um, but what they are doing as well is pushing that the message that Obviously, there has to be some changes that come from inside industry as well. Um, so some of the recommendations that EEF are throwing out uh, are, are things like creating e-communities to allow more effective interaction um, and communication between GPs and employers, um, and also just simple measures such as making sure that new employees uh, are trained on the use of fit notes as part of their induction into a company as well. Mm, it would definitely be uh, worthwhile seeing how how those um, recommendations are, are taken and, and furthered. Mm. So in other news, the SMMT have reported that British automotive manufacturing has delivered yet another strong performance last month. Um, the sector really seems to be booming, doesn't it, Callum? Yeah, it seems like there isn't almost a week that goes by when we don't hear about some positive news coming out of the UK automotive sector, um, particularly when we're looking at the OEMs as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, this, this particular piece of news comes from the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders um, and shows that the sector has actually achieved its, its best half year, year output since uh, 2008, um, June 2008. So to give you some figures, the UK uh, in June built 143,759 cars. Uh, the total number of these cars produced for, for export was actually up 9%, which is great news for the, for the export markets. Um, and it actually outperformed the domestic market, which unfortunately was down a little to 7.1%. Uh, 7 um, so June's impressive numbers have led into yet more positive news for the sector as well. Yeah, absolutely. So if we just want to put the focus onto the actual individual as employees working inside of uh, our, our automotive factories, um, the SME, SMMT has shown that uh, the sector achieved £100,000 uh, in added value per employee in 2014 compared with uh, £74,000 in, in 2010. So we're looking at a 35% increase there as well. And, and, and I guess just to put that into some kind of context as well, looking at the greater scale of the UK employment, um, well, the, the average employee around the UK adds about £50,000 in added value per year. Um, and with, for this, with a lot of our, our car manufacturers ready to really on the brink of, of launching new models in the next 12 to 18 months, um, I, I think we should hopefully see these figures go even further as well. And finally, um, a BAE Systems graduate has developed uh, something capable of delivering an estimated £45 million worth of cost savings over the next two decades. Um, what's the story here? Yeah, I, I really like this story, Johnny. So basically, a, a graduate engineer at BAE Systems has developed a new type of masking tape, uh, which the company says will drastically reduce uh, time and deliver cost savings, uh, as you said, of up to uh, 40, £45 million over the next two decades. Uh, so the team, including graduate Sam Ashworth, who normally engineers and manufactures parts for the new F-35 Lightning II uh, aircraft at the Lancashire site, 
have developed this clever solution which addresses a common problem of adhesive um, residue being left on aircraft parts or on components once it's removed. They normally use a, a heavy aluminium tape and once that's peeled away you get this residue, we all know what it's like. Um, but to remove this it could be time consuming, it could be, it could be damaging to these very sensitive aerospace parts as well um, and, and costly to remove. So this tape that they've developed which I guess doesn't leave this residue, it's, it's actually been so successful that it's already been put to use on the F-35 Lightning II aircraft um, which the company is saying is saving them around £15,000 per aircraft um, and they're also looking at implementing it into the production processes of both the Hawk and the Typhoon aircrafts as well. Um, I, I just think this is great. It's one of those stories where even though, yes, it's a big manufacturer, it's a very big manufacturer, but they're looking at some of the smaller processes that are coming in and, and it, they're using it to save money um, and, and it can potentially save them millions and millions of pounds. It's just one of those great stories that we do like to, like to see here and read about it at the manufacturer. Definitely British innovation at its finest. Some Fantastic news uh, coming out of UK Manufacturing this week. Thanks for joining us, Callum. Um, don't forget that you can read all about these stories and more, including in-depth features and interviews um, at themanufacturer.com, as well as staying up to date by following TM on Twitter via at The Manufacturer. And on one final note, nominations for TM's Top 100 2015, they close on July 31st. So if you know someone blazing a trail in UK manufacturing, um, get nominating. So that's all, all the time we've got for this week. As always, the links to all of these stories and how to get your TM Top 100 nomination will be included below. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.